Hey, this is Ray Dombrowski. Today I want to show you my top four ways to add texture to designs in Adobe Illustrator. First, I'm going to show you how to make your own texture. I own a company called the Vector Lab, and I sell a lot of textures that are optimized for graphic design, for t-shirt design. They work great with posters and any kind of illustration. But I'll show you how to make your own texture. So what I'm going to do is I took couple photos of some concrete just outside my house so let me open one of those and I just take it with my iPhone you can do the same I went into kind of an area in shade so there's no cast shadows and let me rotate this and what I want to do is I want to get the color out of this so let's go image adjustments desaturate it's still an RGB file, but all the colors taken out. The next thing I want to do is change the levels. So we're going to brighten the brights and we're going to darken the darks. And in our levels, we can just squeeze these sliders together to approximate what would start to look good as a texture. And I think that's starting to look pretty good. Let me zoom in here. And I don't know if you can see it on the video. This is zoomed in 200%, but there's a lot of little tiny bits. There's still a little bit of grayscale values and there's just pixels off by themselves. Now, when we're using textures, especially for t-shirt design, you don't want really small, tiny individual pixels in your textures because when you screen print, those little pixels won't show up. And it's just better if we have a nice texture that doesn't have elements that are too small. So what I want to do is let's blur this texture out a little bit first. So let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And there's no real rule of thumb here. I wouldn't blur it out too much. Somewhere around between two and three pixels radius of your blur is good. And let's just click OK. Now what we want to do is do a threshold. And that's going to take everything to either black or white pixels. There's going to be no grayscale pixels. So let's go image adjustments threshold. And you'll see a lot of that gray just vanishes. And we can move the slider around. We can have it. We can have a whole lot of texture or we can move the slider the other way. So it's just little sparse bits. And I think that looks pretty good at 134. Let me click OK. And let's zoom out to see how it looks. Yeah, I think that looks good. So the first way I'm going to show you how to add texture in Adobe Illustrator is kind of the most basic and not one I really recommend, but there are some advantages to it. So I'll go ahead and show you that. So let's go ahead and save this as concrete texture RGB. So I can just keep track of this. Let's click save. Now we go back into Illustrator and we can go File, Place, and let's place that texture in there. So let's go ahead and image trace this and click Expand. That changes everything to vector points. And what we want to do is double click on that, select some of the white, and then go select same fill color and just delete that. Now you'll notice this is taking a while and that's one of the problems with vector textures is there's so many little vector points in there that it starts to really slow down your computer. That's why I don't like them. The other reason I don't like them is because when they are changed to vector points, if you zoom in, you'll get little weird like pinched points like this and you'll see this texture is it's just it's like a tiny little trapezoid right here and it's really losing a lot of the information that was in that Photoshop RGB file. So anyway, that's the first way is just to use them as vector textures. Now, even though I say in general, I don't like vector textures, if you have vector textures and it's just in a small area or the vector points are limited, then it's not going to slow your computer down too much. I do have some optimized vector textures for sale on my website. You can follow the links below the video to find those. But anyway, now you know how to make a vector texture. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. 
and let's go back to our Photoshop file, our RGB file. Now the real trick to using textures in Adobe Illustrator is you want to bring those textures in as bitmap color mode. So what we do is we go image mode and you have to change it to grayscale first looks the same, didn't really change it. We had already thresholded it. So it was already only black or only white. There was no grayscale in there anyway. And now we wanna go image mode bitmap. And there's different methods here, but with this method, let's just keep it at 50% threshold and click okay. And then now when we save that, we wanna save this and mark it as a bitmap. So we'll call it concrete texture bitmap. And you can either save bitmaps as PSD or TIFF, but I'll save it as a PSD Photoshop file. So let's click save. Now let's go back to Illustrator. Let's place in that texture, concrete texture bitmap, place. Now let me scale it just a little bit more to fit. Here's the great thing about bitmap textures in Illustrator is you can assign them any color. So right now it's, it comes in, it looks black, but we could sample white, change it to white. We can change it to any color. In general, with t-shirts, what you're gonna wanna do is just match the background color that it's on. And that emulates the fabric color showing through. In general, with t-shirts, you wanna have the texture knocking back to fabric color. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One is it's just one less color to screen print. The other reason is it sort of softens up your design. If your design is full solid ink, it's gonna be more noticeable when you wear it. You'll be able to feel it. Where if the design is broken up a little bit by texture, it's gonna be a little bit nicer wear. Now, the other thing you can do is mask out your texture with a clipping mask. Let me move the texture off to the side here. And I'm just gonna take some of this vector art here and just copy it. And I'll paste it off to the side. So what you might wanna do, depending on, on your design, is you wanna have texture. Let's change this to like, like a blue texture. And let's just say we want that speckle masked in with that type. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing you need to do is change this path to a compound path. Actually, we wanna make a copy of it. So let's select it all without the texture and group it. Now go Command C, and then you're gonna do a paste in front. And I'll just change the color so you know it's different. And what we want to do now is go object, compound path, make. Now that this is a compound path, what we can do is I'm just going to shift select to select that texture and then go object, clipping mask, make. And what will happen is you get a warning message. In general, if you get that message and it's something like this, it's not going to slow your computer down. This is a warning message that's been in Illustrator from back in the day when computers were really slow. So let's go ahead and click yes. And now you'll see, I can move this texture out of the way that's clipped out. And that's a great way to add texture if you don't want it to knock back to the background color. So let me show you the fourth and final way to add texture to your designs in Adobe Illustrator. This is the best way, especially for t-shirt designs, and I'll show you why. So let's go back to our eagle design. And what I wanna do is go File, Place. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'll select one of my Plastisol textures. These are premium textures that I have for sale on the vectorlab.com. And they emulate old cracked ink, wash and worn look, like a vintage tee. So it's a great way to make your t-shirt designs look vintage. So let's try Plastisol 9 Lite. That's one of the lighter textures. It won't beat up your t-shirt design as bad as some of the darker ones. So it really depends on your design, what's gonna look the best. But I think this one will look great with a light texture. 
So I'm just scaling this appropriately. Zoom out a little bit here. So this last method is called the opacity mask method. And what it does is it knocks texture through your design using an opacity mask. Let me show you that. So one thing I want to do, let's unlock everything because I had locked the background. I had locked the eagle in the previous demonstration. Let's change our background color to a dark gray. And then we lock that and I'll select whole design. And I'm going to change that to a light gray. So now you see the background color is a dark gray. The texture is black and the design is a light gray. So what I want to do now is select everything except the background. Make sure again, your texture is on top and your design is below that. And if you're using two textures at the same time, make sure you group them together. But we're only using one texture here. So I'll just select everything, make sure the texture is selected. And then in our transparency window, we click make mask. And you'll see that that knocks transparency through our design. And I'll change this eagle back to black so you can see a little better. And the nice thing about this is you can easily recolor that design without affecting the transparency. And the texture still shows through unaffected. That's it for now. Be sure to check out T-Shirt Design Master Collection, which is my biggest bundle of textures, mock-up templates, logo templates, graphic design tutorials, and T-Shirt Design workshops. You can find out about that in the links below the video. Thanks for watching.